So how to position a violin bridge? It's a question that comes up on the internet a lot. And today I want to answer that because I've checked out a lot of the answers that have been given. And as a violin maker, I'm not all that happy with all of them. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to position the violin bridge just right. So that firstly, the instrument sounds good, but I'll also give you a whole lot more information about the bridge that not a lot of other people are sharing. So here we go. So we've got a violin and that's a thing. A lot of times, um, if you order instruments online, they will arrive with the violin bridge down, expecting you, if you're a new player, to actually put the bridge up. But that's one of the most scary things in the world. I mean, there is 27 kilos of weight on top of the bridge and they're expecting you to put that up. But anyway, if you're in one of those situations, or if for some reason the bridge has fallen out or something like that, I'm going to show you how to put up the bridge. Let's get started. Now, the first thing you're going to have to check is that there's nothing rattling around inside the instrument like this. So what's rattling around in there is the sound post. And when the sound post is down, don't put up the bridge, go to your nearest violin maker and just get it professionally sorted. But if the sound post is standing up, you can stand up your violin bridge. So in the case of this violin, the sound post was down, so I am quickly going to put it up. Now this is not something you're gonna be able to easily do. I've had over 35 years experience. And for me, this is a fairly quick job. Uh, there's a very accurate location for the sound post, so I'll be doing that later, but for now I've just popped it up. Okay, so I've got the sound post up, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put on the strings. I'm going to assume that there are no strings on the instrument, but if there are, I'll just show you, just disregard this next bit of putting the strings on. I've got a very detailed video on how to put on the strings, so I'll be pretty quick with this one. Make sure you put something soft, like a piece of paper towel, underneath, uh, between the tailpiece and the top plate, just to make sure the top plate doesn't get scratched. Okay, now I have two strings on, so now it's time to put up the bridge. But I'm going to show you exactly where to put it. Do you see these little nicks uh, just here in the F-hole, the little nicks in the F-hole? Now, if you draw a line from this one to that one, now you don't have to draw this line, but it's just good. Uh, so you can just do that in your imagination. But this line has to go right through uh, the middle of the bridge, okay? So right through, like if you have, if you take the bridge sideways and go exactly halfway, that line should be exactly in the middle. Uh, now the bridge has to go with the stamp towards the fingerboard and also the lower side here is on the E side and the taller side of the bridge is on the G uh, side. Now I'm gonna assume that everything is correct with your instrument and everything's correct with the bridge. But most instruments, and have a look at my $100 violin video, and you'll see that not every instrument is the same. And when instruments come from my shop, I make sure that they're professionally set up so they're really easy to play. But not everyone does that. You know, a lot of places uh, buy instruments directly from factories and they just sell them. They know nothing about violin making and they literally sell the instrument the way it came from the factory, which in my opinion is basically unplayable. But if you're left with an instrument like that, um, you know, do your best to put up your bridge. If you don't have access to a violin maker, follow my example on how to do the bridge. 
But if you can get to a violin maker, make sure you get them to check it over because it could save you a world of hurt if things are wrong. Like if the string heights are too high, if the bridge doesn't fit, the bridge is too thick. There are so many variables. But let's just assume that everything's right about the bridge. So now comes the time to put the bridge up. So I put, my, put the violin on my lap like this and uh, I'm going to turn the bridge sideways like this and then I'm going to turn it up underneath the strings and so you need to make sure that the strings are loose enough that they will allow you to put up the bridge. So now we need to make sure that this line that's running from here to there is exactly in the center of the bridge. And that the distance uh, between this string and the edge of the fingerboard and this string of the and the edge of the fingerboard are the same. So you want that to be right in the middle. And that way it's um, the bridge is nice and straight. It's, it's in the middle. And uh, so the next thing you need to make sure is that the bridge is straight this way. You don't want it to be leaning because if it leans too far, it can fall over. So let's just quickly straighten it. So I can take this off now. I'm just going to straighten the bridge slightly this way as well. Okay, so there are three things you need to watch. Firstly, that it sits correctly on the top plate here. And so that's between the nicks on the F holes. You might need to make sure that it sits perfectly on top of the top plate this way so that it's equal uh, runs equal over the fingerboard and then you have to make sure that the bridge is straight and you want a bridge to be um, at right angles to the top plate to the base bottom here so if you put a piece of paper just here on top of the top plate there's the base of the top plate it lines up with the back of the bridge like this so remember the stamp is at the front, the, the E string is lower than the G string. On a full size the E string should be between three and three and a half millimeters off the top plate like this and the G string should be between five and five and a half millimeters off the top plate like that. And uh, but it can vary very slightly for um, people with different strength in their hand. So I make it a bit lower for people with weaker hands. And I've actually made it a little bit higher sometimes too. Um, the other thing you need to make sure of, that the bridge has the correct curvature. So this way it needs to have the correct curvature. That means that when you play one string, you don't play another string at the same time by accident, uh, but there, it's not too curved so that it's really that you have to do this big pumping action when you're bowing. All right, let's put on the last two strings and then the violin's all ready to go. And just remember when you're tightening the strings here, the bridge actually gets pulled to lean backwards. So as you're tightening the strings, keep pulling the bridge back towards you know straightening the bridge a little bit here we go and it usually pulls towards the tailpiece I'll quickly put on the last two strings you don't need me uh, to watch me do that I did a great video on how to put on a violin string so I look that one up let's have a look it's got a slight lean again so I've got to put it back again and I push my two fingers together I do have a um, I do have a video on how to straighten your violin bridge as well. Uh, make sure it's between, oh, this looks slightly crooked. Let's just check it out. Okay, there we go. Uh, sometimes these nicks in the F hole aren't in the right position. They're supposed to mark a thing called the mensha. And I won't explain that, explain that here, but they're supposed to be, um, they're supposed to be exactly in line with each other so that you have a right angle here. And they're also supposed to be a certain distance from the edge of the top plate up here. And, uh, and, but that isn't always correct on every instrument. It should be, 
but it is noise. It's usually it should be 195 millimeters for a full size violin. This is actually a three quarter size violin, but uh, uh, I just thought I'd show you on one of my student instruments. It's a Vivace violin, uh, so you can kind of see um, how it is. I used a very, very, very uh, a special soft pencil. Uh, it's like a type of a crayon to mark um, to mark this. So it just rubs, literally just rubs off um, very easily the pen pencil mark. So don't don't use pencil on your own instrument, especially have you, if you have a more valuable instrument with valuable varnish. Don't draw in on it. Just use your eyesight and make sure it's in between those nicks in the F hole. Anyway, next uh, make sure it's straight, then you just tune up your instrument. Okay, so we're tuned now and the violin is ready to play. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you like to see more of my videos, hit the subscribe button and the little bell and keep making beautiful music. And remember, I've made a whole lot of videos explaining how the violin works. If this is your first introduction to me, it's worth watching some of my other videos because I teach a whole lot about how your instrument works. And I think every player should really have a good understanding on how their instrument works and how they can make it work better for them. Okay, see ya. Thank <laughs> you.